Hey guys, how's hey. it going? Welcome, I'm the solution artist Bobby F. Perry Hart here. Just I'm so super excited to Sally connect with you guys. This is? Sally E. Tadina. This is a really powerful episode. This is going to be a wonderful connection I'm about to make here. Uh, I, I've been, you know, I've been working, we've, we've been doing stuff, we've been creating things. Lots of amazing things are happening inside of our lives, inside of our, our time together. Uh, and, you know, throughout this journey, I've, um, I've signed on a podcast deal. So I'm working with Elevate Radio and we're, we're, we're putting together a wonderful show for you guys. And I, it brought me to a lot of emotion to think, oh my God, I'm doing it. It's going to happen. We're going to make this happen. And throughout this journey, I, uh, I, I, I wanted to interview people. I wanted to do, do uh, go lives where or, or or interviews or podcasts or like sessions or episodes where we would do live readings for people, so you'd be able to see this in its full glory, and people can can see the numerology behind a name and behind how it works. And then I also wanted to make sure that I I like I, I came out there with some straight up value and some straight up power. So there's going to be three different types of. Um, of sessions or episodes that you have to look forward to. One of them being the interview concept where I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys the stories of people that I want to bring to the table I want to bring to you. And uh, Sally and I were joking with each other. She's like, "Oh, we already have, you know, your ultimate podcast and we're doing this and we're supposed to have a podcast deal and now you're going to go and do them by yourself." And I'm like, "Listen, lady, I got to do my business. I got to handle this. It's going to be great. Don't you worry. We're still a power couple. We still run our businesses together. We still absolutely do everything. We run our lives, our families together. So I'm not afraid of that to know that we're going to be doing powerful things. But the thing is, is that one of the first people that I wanted to interview, one of the first times that I wanted to see uh, someone come in was my sweetheart Sally. I wanted you guys to know this. I wanted you guys to see this for yourselves. I wanted to showcase her story because every so often I'm gonna be interviewing people. So this interview was one that I was like, well, of course you're gonna be one of the very first people that, are, that ever get broadcast <laughs> on my show because you, know, you made this, you helped me make this. Oh, you helped me make you. this success in my life. And a lot of people may or may not get this, you know, when it, but the behind every powerful man is a very powerful woman. I'll tell you that for sure. We're just behind the scenes. <laughs> just behind the scenes, yeah. <laughs> well, the reality is, guys, is that like there's a story here. There's a powerful story here that I that I fell in love with, and I wanted to build my life with. So I want to take you guys down a memory lane. I want to take you guys down, uh, you know, uh, like a, like this this story. This is a fairy tale. This is my fairy tale. <laughs> Literally, this is my fairy tale, and I'm, I'm just, I'm so blessed to be able to give this to you guys. I hope that you guys find so much love in it. If you're not, if you're with someone right now, and you're with, uh, like in a relationship, and you know you're in love with someone, you're building your dreams, you're building your life together. I would love it if you saw this story. And it inspired you to create something for yourselves or do something for you inside of your life, okay? So just just so you guys know, I, I hope that that gives it to you. If you're not in a relationship and you're not currently getting married or building your life, you know, with the woman of your dreams or the man of your dreams just quite yet, I hope that this story inspires you that you can find the love of your life and that you absolutely deserve, you absolutely are, are earned it, you should have it. Uh, and, and yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So we're, we're live right now on the Facebook channel. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know, come and, come and follow me on Bobby F. Perryhar on Facebook. I'm the only Bobby F. Perryhar on there. You see, a, you see a picture of me and my lovely wife to be my blushing bride. Um, but this is where you guys get a chance to, to be live with us, communicate with us. Joanne's here. Don's here. My boy Steve's here. Uh, so we got a lot of people. Christy's here as well. So there's, there's people here with us, basically enjoying our story with us. I hope that you guys have a very, very powerful, profound experience. Falling in love with us the way that I fell in love with Sally. But uh, it's crazy because I've been here since before you were here. I was, I was 
inside of this community, these people that I work with, these people that I build with, and you just made it so much sweeter. And I, I, I can't even remember a time now without you. And it's funny to see certain people that in my life, like we, we just had Steve come over to the island yeah. and, uh, you know, this episode with him as well, in case you guys are, you need to see that one. It was really yeah, powerful. Um, but, you know, he came in, he's a friend of mine from years ago. And the last time I saw him, the last time I saw him, he, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't even moved in with Sally yet. I was just this crazy guy who was like, I'm going to move to the island for, for this new girl that I met in my life, right? And I was, I was committed. I was ready to go all in. So we're going to talk about this. So I want to build this story up. But so we're going we're gonna to talk about how we met. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of the things that you've gone through in your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, who you are now, uh, how you identify, and all of the cool things that are happening inside of your world. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, because Sally's always like, we got to figure this out. We can't just go live and do stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't need to figure anything out. We're just going to go out there and share our story. So first things first, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you so much. It's an honor to have for you to have me here. I feel so, like blessed and fortunate to be here and share my story or our story um i don't know where to look because we have two screens here but <laughs> you can look to the audience or you can look to the to the yeah. recording i like looking here better but, well yeah because yeah. the, the video is just solid here right yeah. it's just solid it's lighting and, yeah it's way bigger yeah, so if, <laughs> if i'm not looking at you it's because we have two screens here sure but yeah so um how was the question how are you oh i'm doing really well i feel really really good right now that's good yeah, i always to try that. to make myself feel good because i know that um i can just change my state that's very important to me because it always starts from your state or how you feel from there it changes your thoughts and from your thoughts it changes how you speak the words you you speak or write and from there you you know your actions can change and it's crazy, you know, dealing with me every single day of her life, you know, she's got to have to learn how to change her state. And, like, you know, I'm just, yeah. I'm just out there to mess it up. I'm like another one of the big kids, but I'm like the biggest kid. So I, 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 I appreciate you so much uh, on every single level for putting up with me, for loving me, for being with me. Like the words escape me. And it's crazy because, uh, you know, we've done everything backwards. We already got the car we already got the house we already or not the house just yet but we, we we've got the place we live in we got our son we have our family we have our kids and then we're gonna get married so we're, <laughs> we're, we haven't actually gotten married yet it's happening in august so we're we're super excited depending on when you're hearing this it's could have already been the, august um, 2019 already but yeah it's not the average way you mean if you say backwards it's, it's not the most the, linear not the normal way but not yeah. the most normal way but what's normal anyway <laughs> sure, I, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll get you guys to pay attention to this real quick. She's a little soft spoken, but you don't have to have the loudest voice to have the strongest message. You know, your message and your value can still speak volumes. So I can speak really loud if I want. To. I know that you can, <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to, but I'd love that. That'd be that's great. How I get your attention. Sure, exactly. I see. I get a, people's attention by like, hey, hey, look at me, quickly, quickly. And Sally's like, listen to this and she'll go it's, in it's deep intentional sometimes it's intentional sure okay so just so you know the microphone's there and we're yeah. here but blessed to have you guys here i did everything backwards too chrissy uh, it's the best way to yeah. do things absolutely yeah. do things backwards like why you gotta go forward with stuff yeah like, it's, you too, know, boring, right? it's too boring it's too boring it's interesting because i know her numerology and it was one of the first things i read about her when i met her was that She's linear thinking and in logical understanding. She's got a very strong level of four, which means that hell or high water, she's going to get this shit done. She's going to mm -hmm. get stuff done. So we're going to have some fun going into that story. But I want to rewind you guys for a little bit. I want to share with you how I met this woman. I, um, I had a dream. Okay, so this is 2017. Yeah. Whoa. 2017. Rachel's saying, same here, two kids, never married. Then I found the most beautiful man 13 and a half years ago, still not married. Why ruin it? Why go, why ruin it with marriage, right? I mean, for I like to make that joke, but we uh, shouldn't. I know Sally's like, no, I, don't I do that. When I my story, you'll probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
She's been married too. So so yeah. our story's been backwards, but uh, we'll we'll start from the beginning timeline. Okay, we'll start from the beginning of the timeline. Okay. I, I had a dream about her in the summer of 2017, and I was single as heck, and uh, you know I I wasn't. Um, I was, you know, single, not sexy, and not ready to mingle. You know, they say sexy, single, and ready to mingle. I wasn't feeling pretty sexy about myself. I was basically feeling pretty depressed. Mm -hmm. I had just moved out on my own for the last time. Um, you know, left my parents' house, right? My girlfriend broke up with me. I, um, I had, uh, you know, got fired from my job. I'm in a tough place, right? I had, I, I, my, my aunt threw me a job real quick at a call center and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to work this call center job. No big deal. It was a taxi. So it wasn't like the best, it wasn't the best thing ever. My, my, my experience being part of the union, which is a really strange feeling, but I was, I was sitting there taking calls, getting heckled by like, no, like little North Vancouver teenagers making fun of me being like, can I get a taxi? And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, yes, on our way, right, right away, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to like be, and they're like, what the heck's my taxi, man? I'm like, you guys keep calling, trying to call cabs. Like, just call us once. They're coming. It's busy. Nobody wants to come to your area because kids don't pay. And they're just like little brats. So here I am like dealing with this. I'm like, this is my life, really? I'm working this job. I had this dream. And it's crazy to think that I had a dream. I had a dream that I was on a beach and I and this and I was lying on the beach and then this dark haired Filipino woman with straight back hair. So I'm like, great, that doesn't that doesn't help me at all. Like all Filipinos have straight black hair, right? But I saw this woman's face. I saw this woman's face and she was kind of like like leaning into me and to give me a kiss. And I felt this. It was the most surreal feeling because I was aware, I was awake, I was sleeping, I was dreaming at the same time. I felt like the, I felt the sun. I felt like the, that lazy feeling of the summertime that you get when you're, you know, uh, you know, on the summer. And I could feel that glare and I could, and her hair was kind of like blocking my vision a little bit. And she was bending over to give me a kiss. And then at the, at when she gave me a kiss, I woke up. It was like the kiss woke me up. And I woke up and I'm like, nice. I remember saying that, nice. And it was this feeling that God was like, look, your your soulmate is, is out there. The woman for you is out there. You just got to relax a little second there, young boy. Like, you're a shoulder to you. Now do you believe me? And that was kind of like the conversation I was having as I woke up. It was like in the middle of the night and I went back to bed. And I was like, Wow. Like, you know, I, I got a vision. I got a vision. And I just had to be careful. I just had to be patient. Is it boring? No. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I had to be patient. I had to, I, it's been a long day. Mm -hmm. But I had to be patient. I had to be ready for this. But I had to know that I was going to find her. She was going to be there. But I hadn't, find, I hadn't found her yet. It was six months before I was going to meet her. So in that time, I continued to date. I dated people. I was trying to find my way in the world. I, I was almost like halfway giving up to this because here I am like 32 or something, right? 33 around there. And I hadn't found it yet. And my biggest lifelong dream was to find the woman of my life and to build a family with her. So you can imagine me about 15 years later being like, it's still not happening. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know what, I'm not know what I'm going to do here. And, uh, you know, I was like, maybe I'll just believe and, you know, I'll just, I'll just going to go through the motions. So online dating, trying to figure it out, you know, not really satisfied, broke up with this girl and sort of little relationship. And here I am like, what about that Filipino girl? Right. And then a couple of really cool things happened. Not so cool things. A friend of mine kind of betrayed me. And then at the same time, uh, I had, I was online already and I, I, I saw this girl in Plenty of Fish. I saw this girl in Plenty of Fish. So you know Plenty of Fish, it's an online dating platform, right? POF. And uh, you, you wouldn't go there to expect to find the love of your life. And I saw this, you know, at this point, it's like six months later. This is, this is like December now. And uh, I saw this picture and I kind of just like, <laughs> like I remember that feeling being like, ah, 
you know, why not? I checked her out. I checked her out. She she lived about an hour away, a two hour ferry, and then an hour and a half drive. So I figured this is safe. Cause I'm kind of scared of women here a little bit. Okay, so I'm like this is safe. This is safe. This is safe. This is safe. I I can talk to her and just talk to her. And you know, I'm I'm open to this conversation. So I read her profile. I'm into business. I'm into spirituality. I'm into dancing. I'm like, hey, it's not for me. Like, you know, she's like, I'm a mother of three. I'm like, ooh, she's serious. She's trying to find love out there. Kids don't scare me. No big deal. So she wanted to kind of put it up front there. I'm, I'm appreciated that. And then she, you know, I started talking to her. But that day that I, that we first held conversation, that day that we first held conversation, I had a session. I had, I had hired a coach, Roy Bristow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hired him and I was interested because I'm a numerologist and I work with people. So in case you want to get your net, your numbers, your own session done, I would absolutely encourage everybody to do this at least once in their life. Let me read your numbers. But, uh, so I was looking at, uh, I was looking at, at, at her number, at her, at, at this day. And I, I looking at my clients and I, I, I recognize the power within this guy. And I'm like, what do you do exactly? He's like, well, I, I kind of do this weird thing where I, uh, I talk to people and I help them get over the stuff from their past life that could be in, in getting in the way. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Let me book in with you. As a numerologist, as a coach, as an influencer, as a mentor, and as a business strategist, I'm like, I know the value of hiring people to work with. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to go out there and find someone who can help you get to a better place in your life. Like, you need to do this. You absolutely need to do this. And Don's saying, do it. He's amazing. I appreciate you, Don. She's coming fresh off her session. was just with her a few minutes ago. Unreal. And even same with Mama Jo. Yeah. Uh, yes, everyone has should have their numbers read. Thanks, ladies. I appreciate you guys. Uh, so I so I basically I was like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna help people and I'm gonna help them get through things in their life, I should also be getting through things in my life. Mm -hmm. And I had also had this vision of 2017 being the year that I met my new what my bride like the one I was going to be with I needed to meet this woman it was just, I said I committed saying law of attraction I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet this woman so all 2017 I was actively dating to find the person for uh for me and it and it wasn't good it wasn't fun it wasn't it it, it turned I got heartbroken I I got m moved around I got broken up with like you know, I was like, really? Like, this is this is what happens? You go out there and date? I was single for like five or six years. So I was like really out of the game. I like given up on myself. And I'm like, nope, that's it. Screw this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to find her. I don't care. I'm going to find her. And this was my this was my 2017. So two, literally two weeks to go before the end of the year, my ego is like pumping here. Because I'm like, oh, it's destiny. has got to click in any minute now. <laughs> and I, I meet up with my boy Roy. And he goes and he had this powerful session with me. And he's like, dude, uh, he's like, you're blocked off to love. I'm like, tell me something I don't know, dude, like straight up. He's like, no, you're blocked. You can't see it right in front of you. You can't see it right in front of you. It's a, There's an energy there about you um, being betrayed in love or, or abused in love or something. And, you know, you got, you got hit. And I'm like, keeping an open mind. This, you, when someone tells you something that happens in your past life, I don't care how spiritual you are, a part of you is like, <clears throat> really? Okay, tell me, tell me more. So, I'm, so he's sitting there telling me that I got struck on the face from a love in my past life, and that it wasn't you. No. But uh, she's like, no, no, I would no, never no. do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I got struck in my face in a past life, and it killed me. And so I lost my life due to love and due to sacrifice of love. And I never saw it coming. And it was like an instant, like what, what happened here? So I got blown to the face by something that basically took my life. And I'm sitting here being like open-minded. Okay. I don't know Sally yet. And kid you not, I felt itchy. I felt like I had sand in my eye. I felt like I had something stuck in my eye. And he's like, and I'm like doing this a lot while, while we're talking. He's like, He's like, that's going to happen. You're going to go, you're going to feel physical rejections of little bits and pieces of energy that have been holding on to your face that have been sitting there. It's kind of like when you get shot with a gun, there's 
shrapnel inside of your you know inside of your 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 body and it blows up into pieces so the same thing with this was apparently i had energetic release of of negative energy in terms of love from past lives that was keeping me blind to love and i and i physically felt it for the next couple of weeks of like like something like almost like a piece of like sand was like and like coming out and like coming up and like that that was literally the sensation I was physically having that I was going through my face. Okay. That night I had a conversation with Sally the ver- for the very first time. Like yeah, <laughs> un- yeah. unbelievable. Lance is like, you are a master storyteller, man. I'm <laughs> loving this. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, University of Adversity. You guys don't know? You don't know. Lance W. Cios is a powerful, powerful leader and a wonderful speaker. I'm having you on my show, bro. You got to get yeah. on there. Where you stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be very, very powerful. So back to the story. That night, I literally messaged Sally and I'm like, or I, I guess I don't know how it worked. I messaged you. you. Did, yeah. And then you messaged me the day later. Or yeah. you, you messaged me that night too. I messaged you that night as well. So it was hours later, but I'm yeah. I'm just messing around on plenty of fish, being like, wham, 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 whatever, right? And I see this woman's profile. I'm like, hey, I, I dig you. I like that. So I want to let you know that, you know, you, you stood out to me. I hope you're having a great day, whatever. So it was something small. And uh, she messaged me back. And then. Oh, no, sorry. I know what happened. You messaged me that night. I didn't message you back till the next day, but you gave me your number. When you messaged me first, you gave me your number. So I responded through your phone. You texted me? I, I texted you instead of... Wow. Instead of responding back to my face, to my plenty of fish. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, if you want to have a conversation, you know, I'm, I'm real. Let's just text each other. I don't want to go through this app and be weird about it, right? <laughs> yeah. But exactly. uh, but but then then instills this conversation. It's December 18th, and for the day we met. like It's like uh, almost 11 o'clock at night. And or the day that I connected with her, mm-hmm. so we 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 met. We started talking, and uh, sweet little, you know, like crystal little voice. You know, she's super like you could tell it's like a little like like a girl on helium, but she had like a presence to her to her voice. And I thought, hey, she's busy. You know, she just doesn't have time for me and and whatever. And she's just going through her own thing. Like I was kind of selling myself out of disappointment and out of rejection. And uh, it was, it was, you know, it, whatever it was, I, I started having a crush on her and I'm like, oh. this is, this is nuts. You know, this is like a day in and we're, we're chatting now. There's a vibe, there's an electricity there. And uh, I, I said, you know, let, if you want, I can read your numbers, you read your numerology and that ruins anything. Okay. Reading your numbers. There's no more mystery anymore. <laughs> there's no more mystery. You know, everything. And I'm like, you know, reading her numbers. And so no, you did the compatibility first. Well, I had to read your numbers in order to do a compatibility. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like all happening at the same time, okay? So I'm doing this compatibility or number numerology reading, and I sent her voice messages for this. And uh, I, I read her chart. And being a numerologist, I can see things. I can see what numbers look like and what things look like when you've got them in a chart situation, birthday, names, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I got all her information, and I read her, and I was stunned to think, this chart is like the missing piece to mine. Oh my God. And then my mind in my head is being like, dude, don't get ahead of yourself. Just, just stop doing that. I'm like, no, 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 this is it. This is the line. Oh my God. And I'm like looking at this from a numerological standpoint. If I had seen this in a client and someone was like, yo, tell me, tell me, you know, based on her numbers or his numbers, what do you think? I would be giving this person the advice of, you should go for this. Your your cycles are working. Your charts work. Look, your names match, and there and there and there, and all this stuff seems to click and connect. Uh, I have to advise you, if I were talking to a client, that you need to pursue this until the wheels run off. Like you can't just go and guess and wonder, should I do this? Will this work? You go into this and you go all in. And this is the voice that I'm getting from my coaching self in me. Being like, oh God, this is crazy. If I don't go all in, I'm going to be a fraud because how can I see this in someone else and not take advantage of it myself? How can I do that? How what, How can I show up to my to my business if I wouldn't take my own freaking advice? Yeah. So I had to. I had to. I absolutely just without any without any any other question, I, I had to fall into this. And um, you know, it was, it, and and time is going by very slowly here. 
we're not like talking about this is like I'm developing a relationship with her and da 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 da. We're like a week later, like m- like madly into each other. Okay, like she's like talking to me every day. I'm chatting with her every day. I'm like at the beginning, I'm wondering, I'm like, is she into me or not? Because you know she doesn't answer me right away, and little do I know that she's got you know, kids, Mm -hmm. she got a baby, she got toddlers, you know, they're in and out. She's dealing with one dad, two dads and, you know, failing relationship and all this stuff is going on in the center of her. And I'm sitting there being like, does she like me? Does she even into me? Does she care? You know, she's kind of leaving me up to the, to the high here. And then I, uh, I, I I reached out to another friend of mine because this is another friend of mine that reads tarot cards. She's a spiritualist. She absolutely is very intuitive and super divine. And, um, you know, she knows me very, very well in the fact that whenever she posts something, it's like super accurate about what's happening in my life. So I wanted to reach out to her and ask her. I'm like, I looked at her, pro- I looked at her, her profile again and I'm like, oh my God, I feel like an idiot. I've been messaging her for the last like four years. We've been knowing each other, you know, going to do business together. And like, I, I, she, she quickly became a very powerful person in my soul. And I've been messaging her and being like, hey, check the numbers or check the compatibility. Hey, what do you think of this person? What spirit tell you? And then I looked at her site for the first time and I'm like, I feel like an idiot. I've never once paid this woman for her service. So I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to, I didn't talk to her. I just booked in her, I booked in a session with her. Because here I am, I got booking sessions with people. I people book in sessions with me, so I gotta be confident booking in sessions with other people. Help me out here, like you gotta you. If you wanna sell something, you better buy it yourself. So I gotta be a, a student as well as a teacher. I gotta be a student too and take other people's uh, you know advice. So I'm hiring this woman now, Nilea Guerrero. Oh man, I'm gonna interview her as well. So Nilea, if you're watching this, you're absolutely gonna be on there. So I, I message her. I'm like, yo. Or I book in and she's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, so super embarrassing. I know I should have totally paid you for your time up until now, but I haven't. But I'm kind of in these emotional feelings. And like numerologically, I found the woman on my on my chart. And I just want to make sure I'm not going crazy. You know, you're going to read her. You're going to read our stuff for me, right? You're going to do a session for me. You got to read this out. And so she's like, of course. And she made me feel really good about this. And you know, so she's, uh, so she, she reads out my, these numbers for us and she's pulling cards and, you know, she's doing her, her thing. And she's like, this is your love. This is your soulmate. And I'm like, <laughs> relax, <laughs> calm down. Soulmate. You know, everyone's my soulmate. You're my soulmate. Everyone's my soulmate. It's just part of this bigger thing. She's like, no, 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 no. This is your love soulmate. Like this is the woman you're supposed to be with. And I'm like, you can't just play with me here, girl. Like, don't do this to me right now. Like, you know that I listen to what you say. Like, you know that I trust you a lot. Like, you, she posts on her Instagram and it pops up on my news feed, my Instagram. I even go on Instagram. And she, she's on there. And, like, and the things that she says are so profound. It's like she's ripping up pages from my book and, like, plagiarizing. And I'm like, how do you know me so well? And, and, you know, and I'm like having this experience and now you're going to go and tell me that this is the soulmate, my soulmate, my love soulmate. Like you're playing with my heart here right now. Like this sounds like a Backstreet Boys song. And I'm like, I'm like, this is crazy. And she's like, no, this is the one you've been waiting for. This is really the one. And, and you know, it's crazy. And we were put it all together. It's like, you paid me for this. Like, you're not just like asking where and what made you do that? And she went on to tell me that this woman and I were supposed to be together, that, you know, that she was going through a thing and I'm going to help her through it and that we're going to activate because of each other. But this was a soulmate, twin flame, soulmate, whatever you want to talk about destiny. And I was just like, well, the numbers check out. Right. And and I, I had to go through that. And so, you know, I know this is a really long, drawn out introduction here, but I wanted to give you guys the story and the preframe around this. It was about... Uh, it was before the new year, but after Christmas, where I uh, I wanted to go out, I wanted to go out and meet her and see her. It's a very difficult time. A friend of mine, roommate, had done me dirty in business, and I thought he was a friend of mine. He wasn't just gonna snipe me and take a, a, a and and ruin business relationships, you know, out of ignorance. 
and uh, you know he he did a really really dirty thing and a really bad naughty thing, and you I would never do that to a friend, and uh, you know he and I was feeling really disconnected. You know I I I share a house with this guy, and I was super sad. And in the meantime, you know, my family's having Christmas and I'm like, I don't even feel like going to see my family. I was so super sad. I'm like, I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to go. I'm going to get on a, um, a a ferry. I'm going to go into the island. I'm going to go meet this woman. I'm going to go do this. And I did. And I did. And I and we went there. We, we met each other before the end of the year. It was a wonderful time. to, And I felt really vulnerable. I felt really super vulnerable. Uh, Joanne saying, wow, I just love your story. I felt really super vulnerable and I'm meeting Sally for the first time and you know, she's sitting in there, Chevy Impala, <laughs> Impala and you know, I, I was getting off the bus cause I didn't drive. I didn't have a car. I basically was just living downtown. What do you need a car for? And so I, 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 you know, taxied and, and, and got out there to the Island, took a bus out there. Uh, you had to take a bus to get there from the ferry. It's like an hour and a half ride up the, up North. So here I am being like, what am I got myself into? And I see this small little Filipino woman and, uh, you know, I'm like, and then she's cold in her car and, you know, we had this exchange. It was super romantic and it was just like, you know, well, let's go for dinner and, you know, let's have her, let's go have a date. And her, her mom is taking care of the kids at home. So right after this experience, we had this dinner and uh, I was super embarrassed because I was like, you know, she didn't know this at the time. She didn't know this for a while, but I didn't have very much money on me at the in, in pocket. I had spent all my money. I was waiting for my next paycheck. I was waiting for my client's payments to clear. I was still working a job at this time. And I only had so much inside of my bank account to cover a, uh, like a, like a, you know, a meal. And by the time I was leaving, I'd be get paid again, but I had to get through this first date. So we went and, uh, you know, I was ex- kind of like in the back of my mind being like, <sighs> counting my dollars came okay, and have like $36 left. And, It'll be just enough to get me home after, and I've already got my book, my tickets booked, and my, I'm getting paid on my name. It'll be fine, no big deal. And I and I felt good because I had money, but I didn't have any money at the time. So I, here we are on our date, and I'm kind of distracted, but trying to you know be that thing that you do when you meet someone and you try to show them your power and this and that. And it was fun because we we had already broken the ice a little bit, but it was still a little anxiety to have you know first date, first meeting them. Uh, after we had our date, we, we went home and I tell you, it was the craziest experience because I've known her now for about a week, for about 10 days. Okay. And, uh, like, you're like thinking, holy crap, Bobby, this is crazy. You just ran right in. I'm like, I know, right? I did. And, uh, so I, I, speaking of running right in, we go to the door and Tala, my little girl runs up and she's like, daddy, 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 daddy. And then Stanley, a little boy, is like does everything she does, copies, and he's like, Daddy, 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 as well. They're both running to the door to a complete stranger saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy. And I'm like, Whoa, easy there, little kids. Hey, how you doing? And they're like, Are you my daddy? And I'm like, ha 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 ha. Like, I'm like, oh God, what did I do? And you know, I'm and then I meet her mom. I meet her stepdad. I meet like the whole kitten caboodle all up front. There's a baby in there. Okay, there's this, she's like 11 months old, 12 months old at this point, maybe just about 13 months old. Yeah. yeah, just about. She just had her birthday, and I'm like, well, I'm in over my head here, straight up in over my head here. And oh man, hey, what's up, homies? What's going on, Ty? Thanks for joining us. Just basically telling people the story about how I met Sally. She's she's being interviewed here eventually. And uh, so, so then they sit me down and they're like, what are your intentions with Sally? And, you know, I'm kind of like, whoa, dude, I'm just trying to get some action here. I met her on, online. Like, what the hell is it? Everybody just relax. Like, just, just chill out. Like, you know, this is no big deal here, you know? And then, uh, and then no, no, it is a big deal. Like, you know, she's, we got to protect our Sally and she's been through a lot. And, you know, you're, there's three kids here. You can't just come in here and have a fun time and, you know, you got to be serious about this and delete your plenty of fish. If you're going to do this, you got to get rid of that shit and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And I'm just like, one part of me is like freaked out. And another part of me is super relieved and blessed that she had people who were thinking what I was thinking and kind of like, you know, you're in over your head here. Like you got to get real with what you're doing because uh, this isn't just no picnic walk in the park. All right. There's children here that you get, you're rocking into a situation. 
And I was very aware of it, but it made me feel safe to be like, thank you for saying that because this just makes it really a lot more real, a lot more serious. Uh, and so, you know, what, ha what ended up happening was I left. And as I left, I was like, part of me was like, oh, well, that was scary. And another part of me was like, you're going back. Like, you're going to be with this woman. And I was kind of like battling this thing to think, I got to go. I got to go back, get back to my, my energy and get back to me. But at the same token, I was like, damn it, I fell in love. I fell in love with her. I fell in love with her kids. I fell in love with her family. I fell in love with this. I'm going to be coming back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be doing, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm going to figure this out. And then Sally and I started concocting plans. And you were like, okay, let's just take this easy. Let's just pretend like we're, you know, a normal couple and that we're just living a long distance relationship. But um, either you're moving to the mainland or I'm moving to the island, but some's moving and I'm, I'm, I feel it's going to be me because I'm just one person and a, and a dog. You told me you didn't want to be in a long distance relationship. I didn't. I didn't want to be in a long distance relationship. And so she's kind of like, so what does that mean? Like, you know, does that mean we're not going to do this or like we're going to do this or what's the deal? And I'm like, yeah, no, I think I'm just talking myself into moving in there. But let's do the the, the L, LDR for, for a second, uh, you know, maybe six months, maybe 12 months. You know, by the time, you know, June or December, we're going to we're going to move in. We're going to do this. OK. And she's like, fine, 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 whatever. OK, so, you know, we're, we're going to move in. We're going to figure this out. We're going to worst case scenario would be June. And then uh, so January comes and I see her again. Then I see her again. And then by the fourth time I seen her, it's coming up to Valentine's. And uh, I was like, you know what? I gave my notice. I gave my notice to my place. I had found a quick little spot. I wasn't going to live with that with that guy anymore. I was like, I'm going to move out and get my own place. So I found a new place to live. And then the, 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 I moved in there for January, right? Ja end of January, I was giving my notice saying March 1st, I'm leaving. <laughs> and then through, and then basically I uh, put all my stuff in boxes and, uh, and, and I like thought, February. well, the thing is like, cause I thought I was going to move in, uh, in June. So, but I, and then I was like, no, I can't do this. You know, Valentine's day, we went to Parksville and I never came back. You moved with someone February. I did. Right? I meant, no, it was yeah. January 1st. I moved. Okay. So I moved in with uh, my roommate Faith and a, a person I worked with. And then, but at this point I was already one leg out and I wasn't even home anymore. And I was just kind of like going to the island all this time. And every, cause I was doing my, my business was starting to pick up. I was working with clients. I would, I basically, my job was resolving. I, I was like doing really well there, but, but by the time February came, I was like committed. I'm going to move to the island and I'm going to be with this woman. And it was a wonderful, you know, like uh, like commitment, but unbelievable. It's so super cool to think. I was supposed to move out there in June. Everyone's like, yo, where are you going? What's going on? I'm like, I'm on. I'm done. I fell in love. And they're like, oh, same old song and dance. Bobby's going to break his heart again because that's you. I was just running. Don't even think. But this time I'm like, no, she's my soulmate. My numbers tell me. My friends told me. I hired coaches. They told me this is, this is legit this time. And I'm, I'm going all in. She got kids. I'm crazy. I know. I'm going to do it. Everyone's like, bro, are you feeling okay? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not feeling okay. I'm going to do this. And, you know, February came out and I came out and I basically, we went out to, to our vacation, little staycation in Parksville, super romantic. And then I never came back. I, I put all my stuff in there. I was like, I got to come back and get my stuff. But we were dealing with situations, uh, you know, that I won't mention here. Sally's going to tell you a little bit about this. But, uh, you know, it was March where we finally found a place. So I was super itchy because I'm like, we got to find a place. I can't live in this small house with you guys. There isn't enough room. Two kids are sharing one room. These two are sharing another. And there's no pets allowed in this place. And this isn't a place for me to be. I can't be here. I have to find an, an, enough space for me to grow my life and my business and my family. So March comes by. We find our place in Nanaimo because you can't find a place in Courtney. Courtney doesn't want you. You got to go through a credit check. There's like a waiting list. There's like a thousand people looking for a house and only six houses available. And we're like, this is tough. And we're looking further. Campbell River. I'm like, oh, I'm moving away from my family now. Like, how am I going to do this? Uh, how about uh, Parksville? I don't know. Nanaimo, Victoria. Let's just find something, right? And I'm super depressed at this point thinking, what am I, I doing? I have to check now. I'll be back. Okay. So I'm thinking, well, you know, what am I going to do here? Like, this is, this is tough. 
because I don't know exactly where where this this story is gonna go. Like I'm, I'm I don't have a place to live anymore. I gave notice to my old place. I got all my stuff in boxes. It's gonna cost me like seventeen hundred bucks to get everything shipped over. I'm a hoarder, so I got all kinds of crap. And I'm like, oh man, this is nuts. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And uh, March comes by. We link a place. March third, we link a place. That night, March 3rd, we conceive my son. This is really crazy, guys. I'm not even engaged to this woman yet. We conceive my son. March 3rd. You're about to meet him in a second. He's going to come in here. My, she's checking on him. She's like, you know, bringing my boy out. He's sleeping right now. And uh, it's nuts to think that all of this stuff is just welling up really quickly. My business started to take off. 2018, the year of the power couple, I'm absolutely running this vibration of like, I'm quitting, I'm moving, I'm leaving my job. I'm absolutely going to, uh, you know, like going to go to the island. I don't have a place to live. Uh, my dog doesn't have a place to live. The place won't take pets. The dog is squatting and the, you ring the doorbell and this dog just goes off for everything. And I'm like super scared right now because I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to run at the speed of trust and love and, you know, just run. Don't think. Just just whatever you got to do, just do it. That was the, the vision that was happening inside of my life. Okay. So March 3rd comes in and uh, it's like midnight, right? And Sally and I are just getting it on. And I'm doing the numbers in my head as I'm conceiving. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, this the, the respectful way to call con conception, right? We're conceiving. And, uh, and, and, you know, and I'm thinking this is the day, this is the day that my, my son comes into the planet and, uh, you know, lo and behold, Sally was also ovulating that day. So we were planning on using protection, but we did it. We decided consciously that if, she's like, well, if I'm going to have a kid, uh, I I'm like, I'm thinking if you're, if we're going to have my son, we better do it now while you got a bunch of these little kids, I'm not going to wait for them to grow up and then finally come back in. I'd rather them all be in the same age. So I kind of like, you know, I, I convinced myself that this was the time to do it. This was the, this was it. I'm ready to go. And I put all the love energy in that I could. And I put this really solid prayer. And here I am like talking her through sex. And it's like super like, you know, romantic and stuff. And she's like, you know, she's like, if you're going to do it, you do it. You make sure and we're going to do this together. And I'm like, that's one of the biggest commitments you can make in your entire life is bringing a soul to this planet. I tell you guys straight up. So March 3rd, we conceive, we're about, we're about to move. Okay, we move in the, like that weekend and we start building our lives together. And this is where Sally's gonna really take off from here, but just to bring you up to speed, because here we are like a year later, year and a half later now. Uh, we, we went and we did a road trip. We took the kids and we did a road trip to Vegas in April. Three kids and a pregnant woman in a Chevy Impala from freaking Nanaimo to Vegas. You got to be nuts, Bobby. Yes, I am. I'm not doing that again. Okay, I didn't have my forerunner at the time. There was no third row seating. This was all three kids piled up into the back of a Chevy Impala, 2005. Okay, like the car is just like a trooper. But at the same time, here we are taking it out to Vegas on a road trip. With the kids and I'm like I gotta go to this event this is my gas you're gonna meet them in April we end up going to um, Phoenix me Sally and the baby we end up going to the next event in April to go and learn communications from a really powerful mentor Michael Burnoff a very powerful coach and, and trainer influencer if you will taught me everything a lot of what I need to know inside of life and we're out there and my dog dies. Okay, so we're out there and my dog gets run over by a car. My lucky, like, wasn't so lucky that day. But he gets run over by a car. Well, the day that we're going to leave, the day before, perfect venue, perfect events, everything goes in. I was there as a babysitter for the little girl, Jen, who's still breastfeeding at the time. And, uh, you know, my dog dies. And I get the phone call. He's like, hey, you no, know, this, is, this is serious. Your dog got run over. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, listen to my hysterical, you know, like father-in-law. And I'm like, what? Like crushed. My heart crushed. He's been with me since 2012, 2013, sorry, summertime. I adopted him and uh, he saved my life. He saved my life because I, I was dealing with the mourning of a dog that I had passed away for 15 years was in our lives, my, my little pebbles. So this dog comes in 2013. He's with me. 
And here we are five years later, you know, he's going to be seven this year, next year or whatever. And, uh, you know, he, and then he gets, I'm like, I am so beside myself. And it was the crushing, most difficult thing I had to experience. Uh, you know, and, and this time I had my wife, I had kids, you know, they were there home waiting for us. And my heart's just got this big hole in it. And I'm like, you know, just sad, just absolutely sad. If you've ever lost someone, you know, the feeling, um, yeah, it's just absolutely crazy. I'm wondering, Sally, if you want to bring baby down here, love to see him. If you want to bring him, not sure. She's usually, she would come back down here. So we lost my dog in June, in, uh, in April. And then things start to gear up. My business is really taking off. I'm making some serious money. I'm not working a job anymore. We live on a mountainside house. You know, my we've we've conceived, we fell in love, we built a family, now the business is building. We get invited, I got invited to speak by Clint X Morgan. If you don't know the Clint X Morgan show, it's on Elevate Radio. You need to see it. Clint X Morgan, really good friend of mine, client of mine even. Uh, you know, basically, you know, I, I put the X in his name and this guy starts to take off. He goes into the thousands of people in his business and I'm there with all of them. This is how I'm building my living. I'm working with the Freedom Team. Every one of them wants to come up and see me. All the leaders, everyone hiring me in. Starts with Sarah. Starts with everybody coming into the group. And I'm working with them. I'm working with clients. I'm helping them create business. We're getting results. I'm becoming a coach. I'm becoming a speaker. They invite me. They're like, Bobby, you want to come and speak at our event? And I'm like, yes, I do. Absolutely, I do. So we load up all the kids on a plane. We're out there in July. And we, we go out there and we go to, to Brisbane. And I speak on stage and I speak power inside of people. I basically like, you know, Sally's with me here on this, this journey. And, uh, you know, we took all of our kids with us and we had them all with us. And it was crazy to see this. I step on stage and I'm speaking and I, I, I have a more really powerful keynote speech. I'm there and I'm treated like a celebrity out there in Australia. We, we traveled the world. Then after Australia, we took the kids out to Philippines Got a chance to meet Sally's side of the family. We went to Shanghai. The entrepreneur and friend of mine, Richard Forbes, you know, old elementary school friend of mine. He's in my business. He's an entrepreneur of mine. He's leaving his career as a teach as a teacher to be a full fledged entrepreneur. And I see him the weekend that he's leaving Shanghai uh, for the very last time. He's leaving Shanghai for the very last time. And I get a chance to bless him and knight him before he goes and be like, wow, my, my boy's out. We freed him. Sally got a chance to meet him. And we freed this guy outside of uh, his job. He was basically leaving his, his career for the, la for, the, for the last time. And, uh, you know, he was, he was moving away from Shanghai. He was going to go and live a global entrepreneur lifestyle. So we got a chance to go out there to Shanghai. We brought the kids with us and we traveled the world together. This is the end of August. Now, the end of July, end of August. Then we went and took the kids out again. Actually, this time it was just me, Jen, and, and, uh, and, and Sally. We went to Toronto. 2018, we traveled the world. We went everywhere. We literally went all across. And it was a wonderful, more powerful experience. When we got back, we did our, our baby shower. At our baby shower, I proposed and I asked Sally to marry me. We had to get a bigger car, so we went and got a 4Runner, Toyota 4Runner, um, with the third row seating, because that's what my parents had, so I guess you got to live up to my parents' name. And we wrapped up the year, the most powerful year ever. It was basically the time zone of, of collecting us. This is the year of the power couple. We absolutely got a chance to get it done, and it was a wonderful experience to, to, to pull this all together, because at this point... You guys know Bobby and Sally. We're we're plugging into our business. She at this time, you know, it was it was about uh, sometime between February and March. I think it was like right by the time we were moving, where she's like, "I want my own, I want my own equipment." She wants to get her own business set up. She wants to start her own business, and I'm like, "Let's put it on. Let's get it done. Let's go and buy it. Let's get and figure this out." And she became an entrepreneur inside of my organization. So, of course, you know, you know that if, 
you want to build this properly, you need the support of the people around you and the people, you know, in, involved in this. So I had this woman here. She She's all in on me, all in on my business, all in on my family, absolutely wants to do this, wants to have of a, 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 you know, um, you know, like a family, a son with me, a, a child with me, two kids with me. You know, we already have three, so we're like planning on having five. That quickly figured itself out as soon as I had my son. I'm like, I think I'm good with four kids. I think I'm good with four kids. <laughs> and you know, we started we started producing stuff. It was your ultimate podcast, your ultimate solution, your ultimate mastermind. You doing the numbers and all this stuff. She changed her name legally. We changed Jen's name legally. Now she's my daughter. She got my little name. She got my name on her last name. It's amazing. Wonderful blessing. We did all of this stuff. She's getting pregnant, right? She's building her business. She's getting ranked. She got her mom in, right? She got another friend of hers in. She's really starting to build herself and grow her leadership. She's going through sessions. She's hiring coaches. She's worked me in as a mentor. And here she comes in to reintroduce you guys, Sally E. Tadina. <laughs> she came into my life like a whirlwind, like a storm. And Sally, I wanted, like, here's where we're going to turn this over to you. And I'm sorry we, we didn't do this, like, earlier. Welcome. This is my little boy. This is my son. Hello, my son. And this is the result. And this, what, and this <laughs> happened, like, eight, like, nine months later. My, my boy was so tiny. Now he's big. He's a big boy. Look at that. Hey. Look you want to say hi? Is. Say hi. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. My oh. my sweet little Simba, like my, my my pride and joy, like she brought he she brought him into the world, and I I I, I tell you the one of the biggest joys I've ever wanted was to be a dad and to actually have my own son, and she brought him into this planet. I'm so forever grateful for the amount of crap that she's had to put up with for me from me in order to do this in order to be here. I'm so absolutely honored and blessed. To be able to have this woman here and to speak for you guys. So Sally, I'm not sure if you want to plug in before what happened. What did I miss? You missed, I basically I sped through 2018. I talked about our yeah. journeys and our travels and, mm -hmm. you know, getting the forerunner and getting engaged. Uh, all of this stuff I showed up with. told this story. I told that, <laughs> that story. But I want people to hear your version of this. Do you want to talk about where you've been or where you've come from and like how you manifested me into your life? Or, or do you, where do you want me to start? I, I don't know where we should start because I, I kind of like detailed our journey together. Yeah. Um, oh, hi there, my little boy. He wants to be a part of the he story. He wants to be a part yeah. of the story too. Yeah. yeah, why not? And you're there. You're here. Here. You're absolutely here with us, my little sweet boy. So, mummy, this is my, this is my, this is, a, oh, hi. Oh, you, well, you've got your thing there if you want to feed him with that. Well, okay. Talking, well, of course, yeah. Weird. Is it gonna be weird to talk while you breastfeed? Yeah. But like, oh, this is like breastfeeding makes you fall asleep. It makes me really sleepy. Okay, so let's try to wrap this up because we've got yeah, about fifteen so, minutes before our time is over. Okay. So I'd love to throw it over to you and let people know your words yourself. What happened? Like, what happened? Do you want to talk about your marriages? Do you want to talk about the the history about what brought you into this whole thing? We, we should start there. Yeah. Um. Well, so, I want to be really. Uh, clear with my story and I know some of the things are not relevant but I feel like some of the things that I've experienced may inspire other women out there um, so where th where can we start not from birth <laughs> no let's start from where did you grow up yeah born and raised in the Philippines uh, moved to Canada 11 years ago and um, I got my degree in the Philippines in business administration and I got here and I got my citizenship I got a decent job doing accounting and uh, so I did that for a couple of years until I, I got married and I failed I, my, my first marriage failed Oh. Yeah, so the first marriage failed and I got into another relationship and that's when I had children. I had two young children and again marriage failed and it, I remember this time um, I lost my marriage. I lost 
my house. I lost my children. No, not my children. I lost my job. And all I had was my children. And we were living in a transition house. And I, my income was just coming from the government. And I thought it couldn't get any worse. And this is the part that I don't usually tell anyone. And I was telling Bobby this and I was like, should I say this part of the story? I had the fear of sharing my story, that part of my story, because uh, I was scared of being judged. Now I feel like I need to be more courageous and really be vulnerable at the same time. So I lost um, two, I failed two marriages and and I thought I hit I hit the rock bottom, but and I thought it couldn't get any worse. And it did, it did. Um, I'm, I got into another relationship after that because I was scared of being alone. And all I had was my children. So after I got into that re new relationship, I got pregnant. To me, that was, well, it was a mistake to be in a relationship right after I just lost one. But it was a blessing to have Jen in my life. And that's when I thought, okay, I, I finally hit rock bottom. The only way is to go up. So that really motivated me into changing my life. That's when I made the decision to change my life. And when I made that decision, something happened like i learned and discovered law of attraction i that's when i was like okay if i can just really change the way i think i can change my life completely so that's when i started doing that and i i, I uh, changed the way i think i changed my environment how i see things and just a couple months after that, that's when I met you. So that's how we can connect the story. And when I met him, I was already doing my own affiliate marketing and he was doing his, and that's how we got more things in common. Besides dancing, um, enter, I was um, an affiliate marketer and Filipino, Czech, <laughs> and spirituality. So we had all these things in common, and I think that's the reason why we connected is because we both were um, the like right met. Timing. Yeah, it's just a divine timing. So for me to think that I had to go, I had to go through that experience to really meet my soulmate. Um, I don't. I don't even know if there, there could have been any other way to, to really change your experience to still be able to meet him but anyways i, I don't want to <laughs> talk about that but yeah so from there he changed my life he changed my name he changed my life and um things happened pretty quickly after that that's when um i became more um like i was able to get out of my comfort zone um i read personal development books, I started to grow my mindset, learn the communication skills, and really, you know, um, really, like, speak my truth and get my voice out. Because as, as, as a kid, as a child, I never really had any um, I, I didn't even have any pictures like I didn't the only memories I can remember is from what I remember from my mind and so so um, yeah so I, I'm really grateful that I met him and that I am now learning more about myself understanding myself and that really helped me um, remove all the limiting beliefs that were holding me back from success and one of the limiting beliefs that I had then was like that I was always shy and I couldn't speak and I, and and that really made me that molded my character or my personality growing up. So now that I found my voice, now I can speak my truth, now I can share my story and now I can actually lead and mentor people. 
and share the knowledge that I have been, you know, I've been getting from reading books, listening to audios, and just being mentored by our leaders and you. <laughs> well, it's been amazing to watch you grow into the leader that you've become and the absolute visionary that you have for your future, for your kids. For me, it's crazy because I knew what her name looked like beforehand. And then when I pumped it up for her in preparation for our marriage, I was like, well, I'm going to give you a name right now that you can use that's going to help you get to where we need to go. And when we, oh, and when we did that, I noticed a change in her. I noticed that she was eager to engage, eager to go out there and start learning things and wanting to find her voice, wanting to find her craft. And it absolutely started growing and absolutely like started snowballing to the point now where Sally is a coach. She actually has an ability to influence. She uses things like neuro-linguistic programming. She does things like increase your wealth consciousness and your mindset and helps people move from never having a business before in their life to now being able to actually go and make it happen and to share their story and to learn how to do that. So a whiz with things that come technical and practical and, and finite information, logical stuff, like the numbers, the back office, the accounting. She has, runs her own tax firm. She basically does anything that she can for someone to help them get to a better place. She saved me thousands of dollars, made me thousands of dollars, cost me thousands of dollars, because of course she, I spend all my money on her and, her and the family. But that reality is that that's where I want to invest it in. And that feeling is to think that this woman as absolutely someone that I've created a, a like a, a, an alliance or an allegiance with especially I, I put my genes on it like I absolutely mm -hmm. wanted to create a family with her and you know I, I recognize her as the queen of my soul and the queen of my heart so you know on this journey that we're going through that you're that you're in here with us on this journey that we're taking you on I want to make sure that I showcase the people who are important into my life you're gonna get a chance to hear the stories of the people who mean something to me, have impacted me in my life, and have absolutely stand by my side. This woman is the coordinator. She's the, uh, the chief financial officer. She's the absolute powerhouse inside of my world. Sally, I appreciate you so much for everything. I don't even call her Sally. I call her honey and love and my sweetheart <laughs> and my babe. Uh, uh, but she's sweet. the queen. She's absolutely my soulmate and my queen. And it's funny because I've been dreaming about this woman. I've been talking to her in my pillow. I've been holding her when I've been by myself. And she's been there with me. And she absolutely has an unwavering loyalty for me. And I appreciate that. we got people here saying, incredible, Sally. You two are so cute. I adore your family. Um, and Nikki, I appreciate you that for that Thank beautiful. Uh, it's been an amazing story unwrapping and unfolding. We're, you're going to see things from her and I that include uh, your ultimate solution, which is a program that allows you to um, you know, work with me, work with her, get your taxes done, a full on solution for you inside of your life and your business. She's going on to create her own coaching programs and to become her, her own person of influence. She's not gonna stand in my shadow. This woman's got a light on her own, doesn't need to. I come in from the, the spiritual side. She comes in from the mindset and the practical side of how do you implement this and get this thing started and getting done in your life. So for me, I couldn't be happier be more blessed and be more um, like um, enthusiastic about getting married to her in August. We're going to spend the rest of our lives together and, and even in the next life. And, I, and the way that I look at her love is to say, not even if I had 10,000 lifetimes, would it be enough time to truly love and honor this woman the way that she saved me, the way that she's honored me in my life, <laughs> my son. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, to give me my son and to give me my family, I, I feel like on a really strong level that I I need to earn this. Like I feel like I've been paying my dues, but I never thought that I would win the jackpot like this. And she's smoking hot. She's a super babe. Aww, and look at my little son too. You're, You're so cute. cute. Are you falling asleep again? <laughs> yeah, you are. He's falling asleep again. Aww. And uh, you know, and to think that she complete my life. And with that now, I get a chance to be, because of this, I quit my job. Because of this woman, I quit my job. And think about what has happened since then. The people that I've affected. The things that I've said. The things that I've done in my life. The actual, the, per, the person I've become. The money we've made. The, I, I've helped people get pregnant. I've actually helped people create names for their children. Like I've named babies. Like big ones. Like Cameron George's kid. How about Matthew Jang's kid? Sarah Price's kid. I've named people that have come through this planet and it's been an honor and a blessing 
That's okay. He 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 only weaves off so far, and then I and then I hold him here. So in case everyone's like, "Why are you letting your son fall off?" He's like, "I got him. Don't worry." <laughs> but uh, I've I've been able because of this woman stand up for myself, stand up as a leader, become a father, become a husband, become a spouse, become a power couple. And I promise you guys, if you're looking for love, and you're like, go online. Like, See if you're compatible. Find your compatibility. Go out there on a date. Go out there on the side of the street. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> With a sign that says, date me. Probably don't do that. But go out there and start visioning the things that you're looking for in a relationship. What does this person look like? How tall are they? How short are they? How, how much do they uh, you know, care about you? What, how do they talk? What's their love language? What, what type of a, of a person do they show up for you in the, inside of your life? Like You have to put strong clarity around the, the things you want in your life. And love is no different. The person you want is wanting you too. The person that you're supposed to be with is actually wanting that for you as well. So you get the choice. You get the chance to decide. And, and even between us now, we don't look at price tags. She's raised my wealth consciousness so much. We do visualizations. We drink our cacao. We do meditations. We visualize first thing in the morning. We write our goals down. We sit and we put sticky notes all across our house. We steal sharp and steel. We're always getting content. Raise your vibration. That's what she says. She's like, oh, let's go out and get content. I'm like, that's just your excuse for <laughs> writing everything off. Because as a tax consultant, she's going to find. She's like, hey, why not? There you go. Right? That's your tax advice. You want to yeah, go out somewhere? Go get some content. We're going to go for dinner? Let's go get some content. Let's go to the park? Let's go get some content. Everything is, like, Everything <laughs> is let's well, put our lives out there so people yeah. can see that there is support. You're going to find couples like us. So do you have any advice for people who are looking for love or they're looking for wealth? or they're looking for love, how I manifested you, um, I just did Feng Shui. I decorated my house, my room to attract the person I want to be with. <laughs> weird I, no it's not weird it's true that's what happened and i bought plants that gave me positive energy and i man i visualized you and i and i just i really like i don't know i called my higher self to help me and and then you came Aww. and then everything and just so you guys know i mean like if you got kids and you're single you're a single mom out there there are men out there who are man enough to man up and, and father children in case, you know, you ever go through that. Don't yeah. lose faith. Don't lose and don't hope. Be, um, like I could have given up after two marriages or even one, right? But it kept happening to me. and you're, I, Yeah, you're like one like, marriage away from being a straight up Ross Geller from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, it's like a pattern and I, want, and I finally broke that pattern. So um, don't give up. Just keep going and really think about why is it happening to you all the time. Um, maybe there's a lesson there. You have to change something to get a different result. And I, I did change something. I, uh, I implemented the law of attraction. I changed how I think and everything else changed. That's my advice. Absolutely. Just, and I appreciate that advice as well. If you want something to change, you got to change the way you think. Yeah. Change how you feel first. And and, then... But I, I like to think that, like, you know, as soon as this woman walked in my life, I started becoming successful in a way that I, I had never been before. And for me, it's it's just one of those beautiful feelings to think that the heavens parted and the reason why I was single my whole life made sense. I still got a chance to be a young dad. I still got a chance to actually live my retired lifestyle out here on the island. I, I never want to move away. I never want to move back. I want to find the perfect lot and build a house overlooking the water on a mountain. And, you know, I was there just a few months ago when we were actually in a house that overlooked the water on the mountain with my family, building a business at home, being a stay at home dad with my son. Like all of this stuff was coming true. And that's what I like to really leave you guys with is that your dreams matter. They absolutely matter. And, and dream not, as many as you can. Dream as much as you can, as often as you can, but don't get caught living the nightmare of your life, wondering why things haven't happened, mm -hmm. haven't happened, why am I not successful? What am I missing? What like why can't I make this happen in my life? Like don't don't spend your mind don't looking your energy, at yeah. a shady part of your garden where the sun doesn't grow, doesn't show, and be like, why aren't things working? Because you're looking at the corner of your life. Like you need to go into the main place in your life and start showing up. 
and start showing up for people so that you can actually be someone who's going to be there for others. Because looking at my son now, I mean, like, guys, I don't know if you guys have, have seen me when I was a kid or if you guys have known me when I was that small. I looked like this. This is what I looked like as a kid. As a baby, like, this is literally what I was going to. I was a big, chunky little man, and I was just this, this beautiful little bundle of love, and I have pictures to prove it. And Should I have a girl? <laughs> so I can have a mini-me. You want to have a girl now? Oh, no, man. I have too many girls. We have, we have well, okay. we're going to, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I think we may be having a fifth one, but, um, no. yeah. Another part of me is like, no, 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 Here's please. Here's an no. advice. Focus on your desires. Focus on your <laughs> desires. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you going to see next from us? Sally's coming out. She's absolutely going to be doing some pretty powerful one-on-one -on -one coaching for people. Uh, she already does taxes for people during tax season. Uh, she's an entrepreneur and a leader and influencer, uh, a wife, a mother, and uh, a, a wonderful person to follow and a wonderful person to be a part of. Yeah, I'm so if you want to learn some techniques and tools that you can use to clear some limiting beliefs you have, and yeah, so let's connect. Absolutely. I'd love to give you an invitation to work with this woman. Uh, you will just message her and she will put something on the calendar for you. But there's a wonderful opportunity here to get your mindset, your mindset right, to feng shui your life, to absolutely have your ultimate solution and to get yourself back on the right level, wherever it is. You could be single with a bunch of kids and in a transition house and still turn your life around and absolutely become like wearing a, what a how, like I don't want to say how much that ring is. I, but driving a car that I don't want to, I want to tell you how much it is. Living lives without jobs, raising our families, guys. We're living the dream, and I couldn't have done this without you. I really could not have done this without you. Me you, either. you motivate me, and you push me, and sometimes you push me really hard, and you push me really far. And I know it's because you care so much about our future that you're willing to take that risk of that negative vibration energy conversation about you know dealing with my lower self and my growing self. A big part of me wasn't ready for you, but another part of me was waiting for you my whole life. So I appreciate you guys so much for watching. This is a really powerful conversation. Any other advice or any words you want to leave people with? Anything left set to, that needs to be said? My little boy's taking over here. <laughs> <laughs> Live in the present moment. Live in the present moment. In this present moment, we got to get this little boy to sleep. But I appreciate you guys watching tonight. This was a really, really powerful one. Tag a friend. Tag someone who needs some motivation. Share this video. would love to be able to connect with you guys. And uh, I'm going to pass this little boy over to my, to my wife. He's saying bye to everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you guys you. again. Love we appreciate you. every one of you guys. It's been an absolute wonderful journey. We're only getting started. Welcome. I'm the, I am the solution artist by your parent. And this is the woman behind the man. And I, I appreciate you guys so much for being a part of us. This is Bobby and Sally over here, okay? So thank you guys again. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll connect with you guys on the next one. Bye.